We bring you now an address by the Honorable Hamilton Fish, United States Representative from the state of New York. From Washington, Congressman Fish discusses the constitutional power of Congress to declare war. Congressman Fish. John Bassett Moore, probably the world's best-known authority on international law, and almost equally as great an authority on constitutional law, has this to say about the administration's Lend-Lease Bill. There can be no doubt that under the guise of certain phraseology, the pending bill assumes to transfer the war-making power from the Congress, in which the Constitution lodges it, to the executive. This is evident upon its face. I have consistently opposed this tendency during the past eight years but my voice has not always been heeded even by those who wish to maintain our neutrality. It is evident that the tide of totalitarianism in government, which has swept over many other lands, has not only reached our shores, but has gone far to destroy constitutional barriers, which, once broken down, are not likely to be restored. This is the same point of view taken by Herbert Hoover, Alfred M. Landon, Thomas E. Dewey, Cardinal O'Connell, Joseph P. Kennedy, and such United States Senators as Vandenberg, Taft, Wheeler, and Clark. A great debate is now being waged in the Congress and throughout the nation as to whether the Congress should surrender to the President its constitutional power to declare war and in the same bill give away through a blank check the control of the purse. The issue is very clear, and I believe that once the American people understand that the Lend-Lease Bill in its present form is not primarily to aid Great Britain, but to set up a dictatorship in America, they will demand its repudiation and defeat. It is a slick scheme or political device to usurp the powers of the Congress and incidentally of the Supreme Court. The powers contained in this bill far exceed the President's famous or infamous court-packing proposal that so aroused the indignation of the American people. This new proposal of the President's is far more dangerous as it usurps the two most important powers of the Congress, the control of the purse and of the sword, and delegates the legislative functions under our Republican form of government to the executive. If it passes unamended except as to time, the Congress might as well go home. This unfortunate and deplorable attempt of President Roosevelt to usurp the functions of Congress and seize unprecedented, excessive, and unconstitutional powers should be opposed by a free people, regardless of partisanship, on every occasion and in every possible way. Nothing is more odious or intolerable to a free people than the usurpation of the war-making powers by one man. The passage of the bill as introduced would mean concentrating such vast powers with the executive as to create an actual despotism such as has never existed in America, in peace or war, or in any other nation in our generation except in Nazi Germany fascist Italy, and communist Russia. Under the guise of expediting aid to Great Britain, it is a grab for power. I denounce it without reservation as a dictator bill and clearing the way to war. I wish to help to save Britain, but I have sworn to defend the Constitution of the United States, and that I propose to do first. It was rather pathetic to listen to Secretaries Hull, Stimson, and Knox, and to Mr. Knudsen, co-head of the President's Advisory Commission to the Council of National Defense, that they had nothing to do with the drafting of this dictator bill, the most important that had been considered in the entire history of the Congress. Secretary Hull admitted that it had been drafted by Secretary Morgenthau and his Treasury assistants. It was very evident that there was a preconceived plan to oppose any amendments except a two-year time limitation, which is a constitutional requirement. 
The administration witnesses admitted the bill gave the President power to transfer, give away, or otherwise dispose of our Navy. And Secretary Knox boldly stated that if we convoyed ships into the war zone, it would be an act of war. The vast powers delegated in the bill would enable the President, without the consent of the Congress, to give away our Navy, convoy ships, spend unlimited billions, and put us in war at his will. Every one of these powers should be limited or defined by proper amendments. The fear-compelling invasion talk of the administration witnesses was enough to make the angels weep. But boiled down to some semblance of reason and divorcing propaganda from realities, Secretary War Stimson finally admitted that we had the greatest navy in the world, and the only invasion to be feared would be from aeroplanes, particularly by establishing bases in Newfoundland and in South America. Just what our mighty navy would be doing as the Nazis or any other foreign nation seized and built aeroplane bases in Newfoundland and South America, I could not ascertain from any of the cabinet officers. However, I propose to call Colonel Charles Lindbergh as an expert, expert aviation witness before the committee next Thursday morning to answer these loose and unsubstantiated statements. Almost a year ago, he urged the administration to acquire air bases throughout Latin America as the most vital part of our national defense. However, little or nothing has been accomplished for our air defense as we pursue a policy of provocation and intervention in Europe and Asia. We should not stop with acquiring airports in Latin America, but follow the suggestion made by Rear Admiral Clark H. Woodward a few days ago and obtain new naval bases in South America, which he says would make the United States nearly impregnable to attack from either the Atlantic or the Pacific. I was almost overpowered by the constant parrot-like repetitions of the administration witnesses that because Hitler conquered Denmark, Holland, and Belgium on his very borders, he could easily conquer us. Such bogeyman propaganda and frightening bedtime stories will have our people looking under the bed at night to see if there isn't some Nazi, Jap, or fascist there ready to pounce out and gobble up both North and South America. The goblins will get us if we don't watch out. All the witnesses for the Lend-Lease Bill harped on the crisis they said was sure to develop in England within the next 60 or 90 days. Personally, I know nothing about it and have no prevision that enables me to verify it. I hope there will be no such crisis. But this I know definitely, that this bill will not in any way produce or expedite the production of war material to help Great Britain within nine months or probably a year or more. The American people are entitled to all the facts before they make up their minds as to what is for the best interest of our country. The administration side was presented last week before the House Committee on Foreign Affairs. And former Ambassador Joseph P. Kennedy began the presentation of the arguments for the opposition to the bill in its present form at the hearings this morning. Time after time, the cabinet officers appearing before the committee in behalf of the Lend-Lease bill said that it was the best bill that had been offered, which being analyzed means nothing, except that it was the only one that had been introduced. The opposition will not try to sidestep this challenge. They will offer numerous amendments. Some of the most important are as follows. First, prohibit the president giving away any part of our Navy without the consent of the Congress. Second, prohibit the president from sending convoys into the war zones without the consent of the Congress. Three, limit the operation of the bill to one year or two years. Four, restrict the financial obligations under the measure to two billion dollars. Five, limit or define section three, giving the president power to repeal all existing statutes. The American people very properly are saying to the opposition, well, if you are against the excessive and dangerous delegation of constitutional powers to the executive, what have you to offer? 
I have drawn up and proposed to introduce tomorrow in the Congress a simple, practical, and feasible bill as a substitute that will expedite production and aid for Great Britain without the Congress surrendering its war-making powers or control of the purse strings to the President. My bill authorizes the administrator of the Federal Loan Agency, who happens to be Jesse Jones, to lend, lease, or otherwise dispose of not more than two billions of dollars to the British government to enable it to purchase supplies including munitions, airplanes, and merchant ships in the United States or its possessions. The administration, uh, administrator of the Federal Loan Agency is authorized to lend the sums made available under the terms of this bill to the British government on the best available security obtainable. And in case of the exhaustion of the British dollar securities in America, to arrange for repayment in gold or rubber, tin, tea, or other non-competitive commodities. The administrator is hereby granted the broadest powers to finance British war needs, and if necessary, to make actual grants or credits without requiring any collateral to finance the purchasing of British war needs in the United States. The administrator will make an accounting each month to the Congress of the expenditures and commitments as well as of the nature of the securities and collateral obtained. This proposal is so simple that it could be adopted by the Congress in 10 days and thereby have the advantage of expediting loans or credit to Great Britain and accomplishing the will of 90% of the American people without destroying our free institutions and representative and constitutional form of government. My proposal ought to be an acceptable compromise, as it would restore national unity, expedite aid to Great Britain, and safeguard the constitutional powers of the Congress and free government in the United States. The refusal of the President to accept this compromise will show that the Lend-Lease Plan is a camouflage for the usurpation of the war-making and appropriating powers of the Congress. My substitute or compromise bill could be rushed through the Congress, whereas the President's dictator bill will take months and divide parties, families, and sow the seeds of discord and disunity throughout the land. The President's dictator or war bill has already destroyed all semblance of national unity among the American people split the Democratic Party and created bitterness throughout the nation. Apparently, Mr. Wendell Wilkie sounded off without studying the Lend-Lease Bill carefully. He released a lengthy statement, endorsing it 100% except as to the limitation of time. He has now repudiated his original statement by urging a number of important amendments to preserve the constitutional powers of Congress, which is the crooks of the entire opposition and exactly what we are trying to do. Mr. Wilkie would be more helpful to his party if he would refrain from public comment on such vital foreign and con constitutional issues until he has time to analyze them. He has unintentionally hampered the opposition and encouraged the proponents of the pending bill that seeks to strip the Congress of its constitutional functions over the purse and the sword and set up a one-man government in the United States. There can be no compromise unless the President's Lend-Lease Bill is drastically amended. There is no desire on my part or that of the opposition to delay or interfere with the speedy flow of war materials, munitions, planes, and merchant ships to Great Britain, but only to bring the bill within the provisions of the Constitution. The responsibility for any delay rests not on the Congress but squarely on the President for demanding dangerous, excessive, and un-American dictatorial powers which will be fought to the end in both the House and the Senate. Thank you, and good night. You have just heard the Honorable Hamilton Fish, representative from New York, in a discussion of the constitutional power of Congress to declare war. Congressman Fish spoke from Washington. This is the National Broadcasting Company.